Right, we are back. So, off the back of my bloom, mini blooms that I did with UV resin using baby powder, I'm going to try it with <laughs> regular epoxy. I really don't know if this is going to work. But I'm going to try also to get an accurate measurement of what I'm doing if it does work. At least we know the measurements we're using, whether we need slightly more or slightly less. So we are using the lab resin for this one. As always, all the links for everything I'm using are in the description box below. But I think most of you have probably got this lying around. But I'm going to use some alcohol inks as well, just to give it some colour. Right, let's get mixing. Well, this feels weird. <laughs> I've been so used to playing with UV resin recently that I haven't stirred any epoxy, any normal resin for quite some time. <laughs> Knowing me, I'm gonna try and cure this with the UV light. <laughs> Only joking. So my resin is at 31 degrees Celsius, just coming up to 31 degrees Celsius. I did run it through the vacuum chamber because apparently you need to mix um, epoxy slowly. <laughs> it's been that long. So I'm going to start mixing up my talc now. Sounds really strange. So I'm going to start off. Again, this is an experiment. This could go very, very wrong. I'm going in with. What's that? 10 mil. 10 ml of resin in my little mixing cup. Now, of course I've not done this before, so I don't know how much talc to mix in. But I've got to be careful, I don't, I need to somehow get this lid off. And apparently the lids don't, they don't come off. So I'm gonna begin, I didn't even know smidgen was a real measuring <laughs> name. Uh, what have we got? We've got, I don't know whether to go, we're going to we're gonna go with dash, which is one eighth of a tablespoon, or is that a teaspoon? I don't know, I don't really do measuring this way. So I'm going to do one to begin with. Mix that in. I don't know what I'm looking for. I really have no clue whatsoever, but I'm going to mix that in until it's kind of opaque and I can already see it's not, but I need to be careful because my my other resin is gaining temperature. I don't want to pour it yet because I could miss the bloom opportunity. So I'm going in with, did I do dash before? This is not going well. I think I did. Yeah, I did. So that's two dashes and it's also introducing a lot more bubbles into my resin. I'm going to go in with another one. So this will be the third dash. Three dashes because it's not quite. I'm going to go in with four. Oh my goodness. It's a starting point. It's just not very opaque. Five. Oh. Six. Right, I'm not doing any more, I promise. <laughs> That's it. Six became eight. It just was not looking opaque. So that's eight dashes to 10 mil of resin and there's a lot of bubbles in there now what's my resin temperature at oh it's at 33 degrees which is my pouring temperature actually it's 34 so i need to start working a bit faster there's lots of bubbles in there i'm going to pour that into my piping bag and hopefully a lot of those bubbles are going to rise. I don't know. Don't panic, Dan. Don't panic. Well, we're still at 34 degrees. What I should have done is mixed up my powder sooner and whacked it through my vacuum chamber just to get those bubbles out. So I'm going to fill this about halfway. 
And I think the alcohol inks are going to do most of the work by clinging to the, the powder mix. Um, right, let's go with alcohol inks. We're just going to go with a yellow in the middle. And then a red on the outside. As always, massive shout out to my channel members. Anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. This is quite comical. Okay. Lots of bubbles in this. But you never know. I'm just going to snip off my end. Quite wide. It's still not very opaque. I will be gobsmacked if this comes out resembling any kind of a bloom whatsoever. I think these inks are going to be doing most of the job. And of course, I don't want to go popping these bubbles with a torch. And I'm worried about going too far into the middle in case it pulls all of those pigments in and then it decides it wants the blob where they've all kind of pulled together into the center. So I think I'm going to leave, leave that area in the middle alone. Now, do I want to get any more on the outside? I think so. Really am kind of making this up as I go along with this stuff. I can see it, which is good, but again, it could just be because the inks have clung to it. Maybe I'll do an experiment without inks, but I think I'm going to need more, a lot more of the powder. So, what's happening? What is happening? I can see it's sinking really deep into the resin which is concerning that really is concerning that's telling me that I did add way too much powder it's not pulling in it's blobbing but I'm gonna have to just do this stir now and hope that <laughs> it's not a complete fail which I think it will be if I'm completely honest. But we're just going to continue. My battery's about to go on my phone as well. So I will see you for the results. And then I might try halving that and try it again. See you soon. Okay, it is time to see the disaster. I didn't sleep very well last night. I posted the UV version of this last night and started this pretty much straight away and it's not looking great, is it? So I did some thinking. I know I need to reduce the amount I used for a start. And obviously I added the red to the mix which kind of, see the powder gave it the depth and the 3D effect, but the color helped show it. So I think what I need to do is use less and add some color, some liquid dye maybe to the actual powder mix. But this is what we've got. It's not a bloom. I mean, you can see some of the, some of the blooming in there. I mean, it's not an absolute disaster. It's not shockingly terrible, but it's not what we want. So it's going to be back to the drawing board. <laughs> I'm going to have a little bit more of a think on it on the balance. And of course, I also will be testing this with cornstarch. I forgot the word, but cornstarch, because the, the powder I used is talc based. I need to also experiment with cornstarch. So don't go anywhere. We're gonna run a few more tests until I get what I want. 
Okay, we're on a new day, <laughs> and I'm going to try it. I'm not giving up on the talc. Um, I will try that, the baby powder. I will try that again soon. I know I can crack it, but many of you have said about cornstarch. So it's just, literally just arrived. So we are going to try with this. It looks a lot finer, the grain. I'll show you once I've opened it. So I'm just going to put some into a mixing cup. Okay, so hopefully this will mix better, but I'm thinking it might be better to make this into a pigment based because I think we're still going to have the issues with the bubbles when we're mixing, but it is still experimenting. So I'm, I'm not that worried or fussed about the bubbles for now, but we can look into pigment paste with that making our own soon. And we're going to try and give it some colour. I should just keep it white for the experiment, but if it works, it might might look beautiful as well. So I've got my 10ml measured out already. My resin in my mixing cup, my bigger cup, is just coming up to 29 degrees Celsius. So I'm doing it a bit earlier this time. Just in case of the bubbles... So we start with one dash. I'd just be interested to see the difference when mixing this up compared to the, the baby powder. Seems a bit lumpier. Still not very opaque, but we went very heavy with the... <laughs> with the baby powder. It's looking a bit better actually. It's looking more promising. You can't really see the grains. So let's go with another one. This is gonna depend on the viscosity of your resin also. It's about a dash. So that's two. If this works, I'm going to be amazed. Using UV is a bit different because you can kind of stop the resin in its tracks. With epoxy, it's very different because you have to allow it that time to cure. And obviously anything you add to resin makes it heavier. But this is definitely looking more opaque. Definitely. Do I stop there? I mean, it's very, very translucent still. I think go free, because we went over the top with the baby powder. I think free, and just see how it goes. I can always adjust it afterwards. If I need one more, or one less. And with experimenting, don't go mixing things that are kind of active ingredients either, because you don't know what's gonna happen. And some have said using um, try and baking powder. I, I mean, I don't know whether that would start foaming. I really, I really don't know. This is definitely more opaque than before. I'm going to stop at that though. Okay, it is time to pour. So we're going to go with a yellow center, really easy, and then a red outer edge. I feel more confident with this that anything can happen over that curing time. I can't speed it up with the heat mat because that lowers the viscosity and it will create more blobbing. So I'm just going to snip off the end. It's very translucent but it will give it some depth. He says. There's lots of bubbles, but I'm expecting that. We go a bit closer to the middle this time and then come back out. It's already looking better. <laughs> Right, 
that'll do. I'm just going to leave it for a, a few minutes just to see what it does. I mean, it's looking like it's sinking so far. But it has kind of clung to the colour, or the colour has clung to the actual... I can see some really good detail on this outer edge, but it does look like it's sinking. Oh, should I have just gone with two? I'm gonna I'm gonna draw in my design now. And what I'll do, if this goes wrong, I will try again with just the two. I think the two would be best. Just the two scoops. But it is actually looking really promising. I'm amazed. What I'd like to have seen is more pulling in. It's only been a couple of minutes. I am go I'm going to swirl it. You might be thinking, no, but I'm going to. That really is looking like a normal bloom so far. That is insane. We may be lucky. We may be lucky. Fingers crossed, this is gonna be an, I hate using the word game changer, but this is gonna be a game changer if this works. Okay, so I can already see that this one has sunk quite a bit and we're struggling with kind of opacity. The opaqueness of the colors are really not there. So what I'm gonna try, I've just added one dash of the powder this time and I'm gonna add one drop just one drop I've got a hole <laughs> of my let's resin white dye and this is still gonna be a much cheaper option than using pigment pastes so you can see already with just one of the dashes of the powder and one drop of liquid dye we've got a much more opaque looking mix so let's see what happens so I can already see after a few minutes there's better um, opacity with this. I didn't really want to use a liquid dye, but I did in the UV version. So I'm sure I've got something lying around that I can kind of make work that's not an actual resin product. But I could do that in a different video. I just wanted to give some kind of results. So the, the actual powder, the, the um, cornstarch is just to give the bloom some depth. The dye is just to make it a bit more opaque. But you can see very similar results to just a pigment base there it's really really promising right so we are all set and you can see just from the backs the massive massive difference between the two so let's begin with the one with the three dashes and no drops of liquid dye we we are going to have to play around with this a bit more and you can see those blobs. We've lost our yellow where it's pulled in so much. But it's not really a bloom, is it? <laughs> As always, give the video a thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you haven't subscribed. It's free. There's going to be more videos coming when I've perfected this. Hopefully, we've got something that resembles a bloom here. Again, I need to work on the, the opacity. Let me know in the comments what you think I could try and use that's kind of lying around that needs to be, yeah, something homemade really. Right, let's go. Wow. <laughs> Again, it's very translucent. Oh, that's much better on a white background. That is crazy. It drifted a little bit, but it's given it more of a more of a realistic bloom effect. It was something that I was going to play around with a while ago, like a tilt bloom. So, I mean, most people use a leveling board. I knocked mine, so it went off level, and it's created this really cool tilt bloom. But look at those petals. That is almost identical to a pigment paste paste pigment paste pigment paste bloom with cornstarch <laughs> so that again that cornstarch is given the depth 
and the one drop of liquid diet is just to make it a little bit more opaque compared to this one and you can see a huge huge difference well i hope you enjoyed that experiment and shout out to you guys as well for shouting out cornstarch in my last video in the comments and i will play around with this some more and i will see you for the next one that is insane <laughs> bye for now